week on Code 0292. We chat with Public Relations Officer from Yield, Cindy So, who tells us more about what she does at Yield. She tells us how the organization seeks to empower youth through a various number of projects. Good morning and welcome to Code 0292, a youth show that focuses on young people's issues. My name is Lungile. Today on the show, we'll talk to a representative of a youth-led organization called Shield. She's going to introduce herself. Welcome to the show and may introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Cindy Sonokta Valdamini. I'm from Yield Trust, which stands for Youth-Led Innovative Engagement with Leadership and Development. It's quite a mindful. <laughs> so that's why we're sticking to Yield only. Uh, so I'm the Information and Public Relations Officer at Yield Trust. All right, as you, as you are the information and publicity <laughs> officer, what, what are your job, what's your task there, what do you do there? Well, it's quite a lot, because mm -hmm. um, generally I manage the social media networks, all of them. Uh, I'm also responsible for all the communication that happens within and outside the organization, be it we are talking to the media, be it we are talking to whoever and people that come and visit the office. And also, um, I'm responsible for writing and editing articles, because uh, we also have a website which I also run, and it has several articles now, and also updating on the programs that we do on a daily basis. All right, and um, if you can explain further, you have told us the meaning of yield, like okay. a mouthful. Yeah. So many words <laughs> that even some of them. Um, but what is yield all about? Okay. Um, so as yield trust, like we said, is youth-led innovative engagement with leadership and development. Mm -hmm. Our core mission is to start and sustain conversations that build the youth for the future. We want to see development within the youth and we also want to see our youths being innovative. We also want them to engage the duty bearers that are there and also develop their communities where they come from. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you plan on achieving that? Do you go to, to, their, to their communities or they come to you at Shield? Okay, the best way to reach out to young people is not to call them to come to Yield, but to go to where they are, because you get more people when you approach where they are than when you ask them to come to the offices. So mainly our programs, we go out to the youth and try by all means to lobby youths to engage their duty bearers. For example, uh, we just finished a project which is called Bulawa Youth Integrity Networks. Um, it ended in December, though we planning on continuing the project. Uh, it was all about illicit financial flows and corruption. We want the youth to stand up and speak about issues of transparency and ask for transparency from our duty bearers. Because in most cases, for example, if we talk of Blauer City Council, people do pay their rates. But we also have these other things that come along the way whereby we think the city council is not doing enough. So we want to equip our youth to have that ability to question our duty bearers whether they are doing what exactly they are in office to do or they are just there to enjoy. But that's not what we want exactly. We want the duty bearers to account for each and everything that they do. So we go out, we call the we try by all means to get the youth to create a network because we had a network that had four clusters, which was the business cluster and then the politics and academia cluster and we had the media cluster and also the civic society cluster where we're trying to involve each and every youth from different clusters because within these four clusters you you'll we'll see that we tried by all means to reach out to each and every, because we went to schools, uh, we went to the community, because there are youths that are there at home that are sitting and not doing anything. If you only approach tertiary institutions, you are not getting much. But if you approach them from their communities to just represent and be activists about their issues, it makes life easy. And you were going under the motion of saying, take a stand, like fight illicit financial flows and corruption because illicit financial flows and corruption generally affect the youth also. It's not about me working or whatever, but my general livelihood, each and every day, I'm affected by illicit financial flows and corruption. Mm -hmm. um, and also, the other projects that we have 
Uh, we have a network which is called Memeza Network. It's a podcast uh, network where we have 10 channels that are running now. Um, although we wish to expand to have unlimited channels because there are a lot of young people who are interested in being part of media sector, but they are not given the platform, they are not given the opportunities. So we are trying to reach out to as many youths as possible. Because so far, we had a verse connoisseur that was hosted by Stones Moyo, uh, Sanelis Wemlilo, and Valentine Marconi. They were doing a poetry show and it had a lot of people that were following that particular show, looking at the downloads that people have done so far with the shows. It's more than 300, so we believe that a message was sent out. Because as the Memeza Network, we're saying we shall, we're telling our truth and shouting out loud without any limitations. Because we're trying by all means to be transparent as, um, as possible. So. That's why we're saying, uh, as a network, we want to give the youth a voice. Because in most cases, young people do not have that voice. But as the network and Yield Trust, we are trying to give everyone a voice. Because besides Vest Conoso, we had emerging leaders where we are profiling young people that are successful in order for them to encourage other youths out there. Because most of the youths have given up. They don't even know where to start, but with the encouragement that they get from their peers, it makes it easier for them to believe that there is hope. Mm -hmm. There is still hope in Zimbabwe because most of us have lost hope. Yeah, so definitely. we want to give the youth that particular hope. And also we had youth conversation. Mm -hmm. Youth conversation mainly uh, was working in tandem with Bulawa Youth Integrity Networks. I was a co-host with TA in Sobuzande in Togozis Mapena, where we're talking of illicit financial flows and corruption and how it has affected Zimbabwe as a whole, how it has affected Africa, how it has affected Blawayo and our communities where we come from. Because we don't only see illicit financial flows and corruption at a larger scale, but we also see it from the grassroots at a, a, a very, to its lowest stage. So we're trying by all means to talk to several guests and find out what they think about illicit financial flows and corruption, also about the history of illicit financial flows and corruption, where it began, where we are now, and where we think we will be in the next five to 10 years. Do we think we are still deteriorating? Like, it's now a norm. If I just give you a bribe, it's now a norm. No one thinks about it as wrong. Because I remember, um, I think it was 2002, where we had that song, and what, what. Yeah. But now, people don't even think about that. We just give a bribe because I want things to be done fast. So, yeah. And also, we have um, another one called Young Voices mm -hmm. that is being hosted by Tando, the poet, and Tuelise Spanda. They were trying to talk to um, their peers about social issues that affect them in the society. Not through poetry, okay. just, general. just general. Yes, poetry was verse connoisseur. Okay. So we're trying to reach out to their peers, whereby they were talking about general social issues. I remember at some point they had a discussion on Amaplesa, how they affect the girl child, how they affect the society and marriage as a whole. So we're talking about different issues. So our podcast is free to people who talk about political issues, although as an organization we are apolitical. Mm -hmm. So we are an open space for everyone. We don't discriminate based on your political affiliations or based on where you come from. We just accept everyone to come and just feel free, air your views, mm -hmm. and try by all means to reach as many young people as possible. All right, so uh, I feel like you've said a lot of stuff. <laughs> and some of the things I was going to ask you, but you were ready okay. to interview Guess I talk too much. <laughs> deserve all that, but let's take a short break. And also, we're trying to partner and or collaborate with a South African hub called Radioactive, where we're trying to expand the network.
cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production, and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-711-0290 or 0718-100-235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology, Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside, Laue. Take advantage of this opportunity to expand your business. Is your podcast accessible to everyone, to someone who's at home, who's seated, who's not doing anything, or it's only accessible to people who are, you know, who can access the internet? Because these days, you know, if you talk about, if you talk, if you talk to people about anything that that you, that has to be accessed over the internet, someone will tell you about data. Yeah. And there are very few places where young people can actually go, especially in the communities out there, yeah. not in the CBD, where in the communities they can go and access free Wi-Fi. It's only, I think, in, in the CBD where you can go, maybe you can go to the American space, North American space. So how accessible are your podcasts to a young, an ordinary young person? Okay, uh, we looked into that, although mainly it was online. Because we wanted, firstly, we wanted to see how many people we can reach online. However, we had um, tried by all means to provide CDs mm -hmm. and give Oprah. And also, some of them were given to the combi drivers, like when there are people going to town, you just play and they get all that information on their way to town. Like, you won't be expecting it, but you get something out of it when you drop off in town. You'll have got something that will assist you in life in the near future. And also, uh, Vesconoso has, um, has been sharing their work, be it WhatsApp. Normally, it's data. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Like, yeah. we live in a tech generation, yes. so... Mainly it has been data, but we're trying by all means to reach as many people as possible. And also we're trying to partner and, or collaborate with a South African hub called Radioactive, where we're trying to expand the network. So we will have a lot of activities, uh, exhibitions, we are going to have poetry slams, we are going to have uh, poetry events, not competition just events. So by then I'm thinking we'll be able to reach out to as many people as possible because right now I feel it's more limited to data and now data is expensive. Yeah, true that. And um, when you're talking about um, the young people and the issues that affect them, you're talking about um, the illicit... Financial, financial flaws and corruption, yes. yes. So um, you mentioned that the authorities, from what I'm getting, the authorities need to be held accountable yeah. for everything that they do. So when you're reaching out to young people in their communities, when you go there or you're doing your meetings and workshops with them, do you also uh, also invite the people in authority so that they can have you know, those one-on-one -on -one conversations with young people so that they can be able to answer the young people, if they've got questions, or it's just a platform where young people uh, air out their views and it ends there. No, uh, because we want engagement, 
they cannot engage on their own. So we will definitely need authorities to be there. On the 25th of May, we had a public dialogue where we invited the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission to come and answer the questions that the youth had about how they operate, how many cases that they tried, and are there people that have been jailed because of corruption? Because the Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission is there to try all the cases of corruption. So we tried to have that one-on-one -on -one dialogue with, there were two people that came from Harare to represent the institution. So youths had a lot of questions. Some were asking about the 15 billion, some were asking about Chombo and his properties, some were asking about several cases that have been made public but we haven't seen people being tried. And they had an insight on how the commission works. And also we have a Blower Youth Integrity Network champion mm -hmm. um, who is a councillor, Kulumani Ward, um, Mr. Rodney Chele. He's our champion who's working with us and also the city council in order for us to get a leeway to our own city council so that we get answers from them. And also we, we had a law and policy reform challenge mm -hmm. as part of that project, whereby we, we had asked tertiary students from different institutions around Zimbabwe to write policies, not policies that already exist, but new policies that they think can be used in order to fight illicit financial flows and corruption. And as part of the adjudication panel, there was me, um, there was uh, a lady from TIZ, Marilyn, then there was a lady from uh, Zimra, and then there was a lawyer from Dube Practitioners, Abangilovo. We're trying by all means to involve all the other stakeholders that are responsible. Because when you talk of Zimra, you talk of tax evasion, you talk of all the other tax issues that are there. So we wanted people with the gist of the information about illicit financial flows and corruption to be there in order for them to have a one-on-one -on -one engagement with the youth. And also when we talk about the legal practitioners, they know the law, they know the constitution. Uh, they have an understanding of the constitution more than us as an organization. So involving them in such issues makes it easier for the youth to also understand how state operates and how other issues um, go by in the communities and also in the country as a whole. And also involving TIZ. TIZ has been in the field for a very long time and they've written a lot of stuff about illicit financial flows and corruption. So we wanted them also to get an insight about that. And also uh, they submitted their policy documents which are going to be taken to city council as a proposal to say this is what the youth think can work for them and their country. Because we believe that as a society it's pointless to say we want to build the future for the youth. Okay, get me right. Mm -hmm. We normally say, I'm building a future for you, mm -hmm. but we don't want that. As the youth, we want to build the future for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why we're trying by all means to get the youth to be the ones doing all those things in order for them to create a future for themselves. Because if I get things on a silver platter, you know I'm going to use them irresponsible. But if I work for that, by all means, I'll try to protect that. Yeah, definitely. We'll be right back after this short break. Uh, a lot of young girls right now, they need sanitary pads and if you go to the shops and try buying sanitary pads, some of them even cost $5 and my salary hasn't changed or I'm not earning anything but I still have to use the pad every month. Cyberspace is home to billions of people and is the right platform you need to grow your business. The Center for Innovation and Technology is offering you a golden opportunity to speak directly to your market at an affordable price. We also offer media training workshops, live streaming, documentary production and events management. Get in touch with us today on the following numbers. Plus 263-867-867. 7110290 or 0718100235. Don't forget to subscribe to our social media platforms. Like our Facebook page, Center for Innovation and Technology. Follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. 
And you can also check out our website, www.site.org.zw. You can also visit our offices at 45 Moffat Avenue, Hillside, Malawi. Take advantage of this opportunity to expand your business. or people who attend the panel discussions and the dialogues that you have, they go back home with a fresh mind. Yes. Or they go back home with, uh, with a different way of thinking about anything that will be happening within the country or amongst, the, amongst them as young people or even in the community. So what kind of impact do you think it has on a young person? Okay, uh, for a long time, young people have been silent about a lot of issues. But now that we are in the picture and we're trying by all means to lobby young people to act, I'm thinking we are now getting more numbers of young people trying to stand up for the youth. Uh, we're also working with NAYO. Um, we had Bulawayo Voters Club that was created. And then we wanted to lobby young people to go and register to vote and also go and vote. And with the numbers that we got, I believe now Youths are no longer in team apathy. Youths are now taking part. So we believe as Yield Trust, we are creating a very huge impact because we also host debates. Mm -hmm. uh, we also host debates in tertiary institutions. We have a tournament called Debate Open Challenge. This year we'll be going for its sixth year. And also have charity debates where we get things to donate to children homes and other places. So with the number of people that attend these tournaments, and also, gauging by the number of people that attend your first program and your last program, you know that you have an impact. Because if someone comes to your program, goes back home and come back with three more friends, that means you have done something to that particular person. You have encouraged that person to encourage others even more. So that's how we are thinking we are really having an impact in the society. And uh, we'll be starting on a new project with HIVOS. It's called USAPO where we dealing, will be dealing on SRHR issues, sexual and reproductive health rights issues. Um, although we want to be working in Blawai, we will be working in CISA, but I'm thinking other youths in Blawai are also going to benefit from that because we don't only want to focus on one thing, but we want to be broad because we are standing there for the youth. So if you're standing there for the youth, you have to make sure that you tackle all issues that affect the youth. So now we want to be starting on giving out SRHR information because I believe people in rural areas or peri-urban areas or urban areas and some in deep rural areas are marginalized. So we're trying to reach out to them and give them information. And I'm hoping we are going to have more impact because we'll be targeting mostly schools and pupils also share what they get from school and other things with their families and people that they meet. So we're hoping we'll have more impact. All right. I'm glad that you are also going out there, <laughs> not just in the urban areas, but then you're also touching on the rural areas where young people, you, you find there are very few programs for yeah. young people um, where they actually help them or they enlighten their minds Definitely. into some of those issues that affect young people. All right, um, but then as a young person, what do you think are the critical issues nowadays that affect us as young people in Mulawana? <laughs> okay, uh, there are a few. Uh, especially when you look at illicit financial flows and corruption, issues of unemployment, because if I'm unemployed, that means I cannot afford almost everything. You talk of health, you talk of education, you talk of access to other things. Without employment, without any financial support, I cannot be able to provide for myself for all those things. And also when you're talking of health, talk of sexual rights issues, uh, a lot of young girls right now, they need sanitary pads and 
if you go to the shops and try buying sanitary pads, some of them even cost five dollars. And my salary hasn't changed or I'm not earning anything, but I still have to use the pad every month. So these are some of the issues that affect us as young people. And also, um, when you're looking at advocacy in general, youths are not really out there to advocate for their rights. So we're also starting a new project with YET, uh, which is called Youth Advocates Zimbabwe, whereby we are trying to go to all the 29 wards in Bulawayo and lobbying them to question their authorities and also help in terms of building other policies that might help in terms of bettering their lives and general livelihood. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have 29 representatives that are going to be part of the Youth Advocates Council that is going to be working with our city council in terms of giving advice. Yeah. Recently, the president has his own presidential council that is going to be advising him and we also thought that it's wise to have a council that is going to be working within our wards that have an understanding about issues that affect us in our wards and in our communities, then take those issues up to the council so that they address them. Because sometimes you will hear the councillor saying, I was not able to reach out to as many youths as possible. But with youths working as focal people within the wards, it also helps to get information about young people. Because the councillor does not only focus on the youth, but they focus on everyone in the community, meaning their reach is somehow limited. But having young people there, it makes it easier because young people really know what affects them. So at the end of it all, they are able to get things that affect them and lobby them within the city council and other people that are duty bearers. All right, so from the project that you're mentioning right now, it means that young people are the ones who will be at the forefront. Yes. They'll be the ones who are leading the conversation. They'll be the ones who are leading the engagement yes. and everything, which is quite a good initiative. Well, thank you. Um, so before we close, I just want to ask, do you think there's any hope for young people in our country? Absolutely. Because it begins with me. The problem that we have as young people is that in most cases we wait for people to do things for us. But as yield trust, like I'm saying, we are trying by all means to have the youth do things for themselves. And if we take that opportunity as young people and fight for our rights and lobby for our rights and be activists specifically for our rights, we have a brighter future ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll say young people out there, they're supposed to stand up for themselves. They're supposed to make sure that they are there to represent themselves in each and every space. Because at times, oh, I've had uh, several interfaces with political parties, um, and they will tell you that it's hard to reach the youth demographic because youths don't really come out. So that's the excuse that they are using for them not working for us. So what we're trying to do is, by all means, the youth are supposed to be there. The youth are supposed to attend all those programs so that at the end of it all, they will not have an excuse to say, we failed to plan for the youth because no one was representing the youth. But we want the youth to be there to say, we represented the youth, where are our issues? You are not solving our issues. So. That means we are now questioning their transparency. We want accountability from you because we were there when it all began. But if you are not there and expect things to be done for you, you won't get anything. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for inviting <laughs> I, me. <laughs> I, I, I think that um, as a young person, and I'm sure all the young people out there who are watching, they feel so motivated. They know that there's hope. <laughs> yeah, there is hope, definitely. Hope not just to lie down and sit and wait for someone else to take up the job for you and do everything for you. Yes. But then you just need to take a stand. Yeah. And it begins with you, and then it also begins with you doing it for your community yes. before you even go out there and yes. do it for other people. So, which is quite a good thing. I think young people <laughs> are motivated. <laughs> No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, um, thank you for inviting me. And if they want to follow us on Twitter, our handle is at YieldZW. Then Instagram is Yield in capital letters with dots in between the letters. Then Facebook is just Yield. Mm -hmm. And our website is www.yield.co.zw.
And what if they want to come for your podcast? Is anyone invited to come for yes, your podcast? Yes, yes, yes. Anyone is invited. Actually, I'll be managing the studio, so anyone is invited. They can come through. If you have a proposal, you can come through, pitch a proposal, and we make sure that we work on it. And our offices are located at Conam. It's office number seven, Sentinel Building, which is by Corner 9 Avenue in Hebe Chitepo. You're free to come in any time. We are in from 8 o'clock to 5 p.m. every Monday to Friday. Thank you, Cindy, so for coming to the show. You're welcome. Well, I'm sure you have heard it all, and you can contact Yield if you want any more inspiration or if you want to be that young person who is motivated <laughs> and who is active and who advocates for other young people. Well, from me, Luin Le, it's live for now. Thank you for watching Code 0292. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Center for Innovation and Technology, and follow us on Twitter at SiteZW. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.